Welcome. My name is Susie Erickson, and today I'm in the studio with uh, Major Janice Reefer, the Salvation Army. And um, she has quite uh, a story to tell and share with us today. And as we begin, uh, Janice, could you share a little bit with me about um, your background? Uh, you, uh, did you grow up in the Salvation Army? I did. I pro- was probably five days old when my mother took me to the Salvation Army for the first time. She was a loyal soldier. She came to the Army because somebody found her on the street. She had run away from home. And they got her back, united with her family, and she always said she would go back to the Salvation Army when um, she was a a grown-up and could make her own decisions. And so as an adult, she chose to take us to the Army uh, from the time we were born. And God called you to ministry in the Salvation Army, is that correct? That is correct. At youth councils. At youth councils. And then where did you meet your husband at? Did you meet him in... um, the ministry? Yes. We actually met at Camp Heart of Hills. Um, we were 14 years old, and his family had just been appointed. His parents were officers. They'd just been appointed to serve in the Arkansas, Oklahoma division, and uh, we were scoping out the new guy. So I met him at camp, and that's pretty much where we dated for the first couple of years of our relationship because the only time we saw each other was at camp or at divisional events. And how old were you when you both got married? We were 20. 20. So you met him at 14 and then got married at 20. Yeah. Well, it took me a little while to convince him that I was the girl he was looking for. Oh, okay. (laughs) And so after you got married, you joined ministry together. Mm -hmm. We actually served as um, core administrators for a couple of years, and then we went to training in 1983. And took our uh, then one-year-old daughter with us to training. Oh, so you went into seminary and had uh, the one-year-old daughter and and your husband. And then um, as you were serving together in in ministry, other children came along, right? Right. Yeah, we had a son while we were at training. Uh, He was born our second year just before we were commissioned as officers. And then a daughter followed soon after we got to our first appointment, and another daughter um, just a year and a half later. So we had three right in a row. Oh, so you had stair steps. <laughs> we did. So, And then ministry, um, life took a, a um, kind of took a turn for you, didn't it? Mm-hmm. There was a, a moment in your life that you could say was a, a stroke of midnight moment. Definitely. Could, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. um, In 1997, my husband developed a seizure disorder, just suddenly started having seizures for no reason that anybody could determine. In June of 1998, we moved for the first time in seven years to a new appointment. And in October of that year, he had a fatal seizure. While the children and I were all at the core having our Wednesday night programs, and he was home by himself. So we came home that night and found that um, he was dead in our living room. But um, even in that moment, God was so present because there were people for us to call who came right away. Our neighbors surrounded us. And um, we just, even in that really scary moment, we knew that God was standing there with us. And how old were your kids when this happened? They were 16, 12, 11. Uh, I'm wrong. They were 16, 13, 12, and 10. So here you are, a, a mom with four kids, and you walk in, you know, to find your husband dead. And life has changed all of a sudden in a matter of moments for you. Right. What were the days like following that moment? Kind of a blur, just trying to figure out how do I um, do this by myself. Um, My kids were great, you know, but they were hurting and trying to figure out life as well. Um, I remember thinking I never wanted to be a single parent. I grew up in a single parent household, and I was determined my kids wouldn't, but that wasn't really my choice. So um, just figuring out how to navigate being a core officer with four kids at home and what that looked like 
Uh, my 16-year-old definitely stepped in and, and tried to be the second parent. Uh, not that I asked her to, but that's just how her personality was. So um, we just learned to navigate a new normal um, and uh, waited to see what God had for our family because it was uh, being in a new place in a different core than we had been for several years. It was just kind of trying to figure out how does everything work and um, how does it work now with Joe gone. And that moment, it really changed the course of your ministry, didn't it? It it did, definitely. We had been core officers, our whole officership. Which are local pastors within the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. And then um, the following June, he died in October, the following June, um, I was asked if I was willing to take a position in the youth department at our headquarters in Florida um, to be the assistant divisional youth secretary, uh, which uh, felt like the perfect opportunity for me and for my children. It meant going to camp for the summer. Uh, We moved to Tampa, Florida, and I served in that position for eight years, and it was just an incredible time for my family. I'm sure that it was a healing time as well. It was. Yeah. Now, your um, your ministry really took a, a different turn when you moved from a, a pastorate position into an administrative uh, position in the youth role. But you really have had to, you've stepped into some big leadership sho- shoes throughout um, your ministry. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the other places that you've served beyond uh, the youth work? I, yes, I did um, eight years as the assistant divisional youth secretary and then moved to be a divisional secretary, uh, a divisional youth secretary for two years. And then from that, I moved to be the divisional secretary for program, which put me in charge of things like HR and um a lot of business details that I had not gotten the opportunity to handle before, but I found out that I loved it and um, enjoyed the just all of the administrative aspects. And then um, from there, I went to be the general secretary, which is the second in command in a division. And again, absolutely loved it, loved working with the, the divisional leaders and figuring out how to make things work the best way in a division. And I I just had incredible opportunities and learned to, um, if I didn't know how to do something, I learned how to learn really quickly how to do that. (laughs) Because all of a sudden you're an expert in your field, no matter what it is and if you've ever done it or not. And, And then from there I came to territorial headquarters as the assistant secretary for personnel. And the job that you do now, you really work with people in crisis moments, don't you? I do, yes. And how how did those moments back um, in that home when you walked in and, and found your husband dead, how did that prepare you for the type of ministry that you do today with people in crisis? Um, well, the first thing is I, I learned very quickly that I can't do it in my own strength, but God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. And so uh, I rely on that completely, and I just prefer to be weak and let him be the strength. Um, but, but you've got to be able to meet people where they are and to understand where they're coming from. So whether they're having a crisis that I've had before or not, I can still relate to the fact that they're in crisis and that they can't help where they are or how they're feeling right then. And what I need to do is come alongside them. What did you learn about yourself through this journey? I learned that I can do um, almost anything somebody asks me if I, if I try hard enough. Um, I've learned to be very flexible and uh, to, be, to always be learning Um, paying attention so that if I need to do something, I can figure out how to do it. I've learned, again, that it's God's strength made perfect in my weakness. If I pray for wisdom, um, he gives it. 
if I look to God for guidance, he gives it. There are times when someone has called me and asked me for how to handle a certain situation or how to do something, and I can hear the words come out of my mouth, and I don't know where they came from, Mm -hmm. other than they had to come from God, because I, there's no way I knew that answer, but I had an answer, and it was the right answer. Yeah. There's nothing worse for feet than walking in the wrong size shoe. And the same is true when we try to walk in the footsteps of others, holding our life up to the mirror of comparison when we have no idea what made them who they are. And your life really can't be compared to any other woman, can it? I hope not. (laughs) But yet there are women and, and individuals, there are people that are listening to us that are in similar circumstances as you. They've lost a spouse, and now they're a single parent uh, with stair steps. If you were sitting down at a coffee shop with them, what would you say to them? Hold on. It might be a bumpy ride, but it's worth it. Um, I, I I honestly believe that God is in control, and he wasn't surprised by what happened. It was a part of the plan. I didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't think it was fair, but I would not be where I am today. And I'm happy and I love my life. My kids are happy and doing well. So I have to trust that that, that this was his plan. And the shoe might not have uh, fit. I had to get a new pair of shoes. You had to get a new pair of shoes and ones that really you've you've stepped into. Mm-hmm. You truly have um, stepped into your purpose. I believe so. Well, Christine Kane writes, be who God called you to be. Do what God called you to do. Say what God called you to say. Write what God called you to write. Go where God told you to go don't hold back don't second guess yourself don't fear man don't procrastinate don't delay but when you're a widow with four children you don't have an option do you no you really don't you just jump in with both feet (laughs) right you step into those shoes whether they hurt your feet or not exactly well thank you so much for sharing your story with us today And uh, may God continue to uh, strengthen you in your journey and whatever shoes he has uh, for you to fill in the days to come, we know that they're going to be the right fit for you. Thank you.